All right, guys, uh, first show was good. Uh, a lot of people liked the zoo animal thing, so anyone got any ideas? Everybody. Welcome to the mid-morning after 10, but still just before lunch show. I'm your host, Brady Powers, and you know, we got a lot of great feedback on the very first episode, but it's kind of been stressing us out here at Studio 301, because we've got a lot of high expectations, and we feel like we're going to let you guys down. We're basically just going to be one-hit wonders. So, you know, we've got a new strategy to avoid that. Mediocracy. We just want you guys to watch and kind of say, eh. We want to be very... Okay. So remember kids, next time, to never shoot for the stars. Never shoot for the stars. Shoot for like maybe an average sized tree or something. Speaking of height, I'm really short and I want to be more like Ryan. Time out, time out. That's not the joke. I laugh. Okay, well now that Ian is getting better and better each year, uh, we even had a makeup artist come out and talk to us about on-camera makeup and all that good stuff. but. The thing is, people, this makeup artist is a makeup artist for a radio show. That's like being, you know, like a sound technician for a silent film. Or being a show host that's not funny. <laughs> Anyways, a dog was just elected mayor in a Minnesota town again. His opponent must have been feeling Ruff! pretty... Get it? Rough? Like... It's tough because his opponent, but dog makes the noise rough. It's no. Okay, well, moving on. Uh, we got NBC anchor Mark Fine later on in the show. Everybody, give it up for him. Pine Martin will be a special musical performance, and uh, it's just going to be a great show. So let's kick it to Ty Bowman and the Sackman Symphony. Ty, you are a fantastic ukulele player, but we still are missing the rest of that Sackland Symphony. But you know, me and the gang actually went out, we kind of gave up on the Sackland Symphony, so we thought, I don't see why we can't do it, right? So uh, I thought it was pretty good, but uh, I'm going to have you guys judge for yourselves. Admir, can you roll that clip for me, buddy? It's just not going to cut it, guys. Uh, we definitely need to get on that Sackland Symphony. But I think I'm pretty good at procrastinating, so I'll wait till the last minute. Anyways, we'll be right back with NBC anchor Mark Fine after this quick commercial break. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome NBC anchor Mark Fine. Good Great to see you. Great to see you. Good to be here. <laughs> it's always it's good to awesome. Man, it's, I'm very excited. Oh, I am too. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and actually, I brought you a little gift. A gift uh, yes, for me? Yes, I got a present for you. This is the... Um, this is the where you hide the present spot over here. Oh, by okay, the way. okay. Yes. Oh, so uh, this is an iPad. It's also my present carrying case. So here you go. Just that, a little, okay. a little something for you. That's that's How a decent that? looking guy right there. How decent. about that? Not great, but decent. <laughs> <laughs> it says it says uh, Brady, be funny, Mark Fine, which is of course a little homage to your show last week, which was I got to tell you. It was pretty funny. Thank you. Appreciate yes, it. Yes, you guys did a good job. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'll cherish this forever. That's going right above me. Watch me as I sleep, kind of. That's kind of creepy. Huh? Okay. But no, fun? maybe <laughs> just on the wall in the room would be okay. Maybe not above the bed. Uh, okay, yeah. Above the yeah, bed's a little too. <laughs> a little creepy. Shriny. Yeah. Yeah. Too far. So, jumping into it, you're yeah. an NBC anchor. Everyone knows this. So what's it I like? I hope people know it. Uh, that yeah, would mean course. they're watching and they're going to keep me around for a while, yeah. So what, what inspired you to, you know, 
be an NBC anchor and and just go in this field in general? Yeah, well, it you know the, I'm I'm doing news now, obviously, and that's what um, you know I've been doing for the last five years. But it was really sports. I grew up playing sports, and it was at some point in my high school life I realized, okay, five six buck 50 maybe at the most I'm probably not going to get paid for this so I got to find out what I want to do and I had, so I played sports growing up loved sports also did a little bit of theater and I liked the performance side of things so I, I put those two things together and thought hmm what about covering games for land they could pay me to go to a game and go watch a game that Sounds would be a like good a deal yeah that would be a good deal so I, I went in and I did sports for about 20 years and it was about five years ago that the opportunity came up to, to switch over to news it was something I thought of but it was just kind of like Right place, right time, and we love Dallas, and the opportunity was here, so we, we jumped at it. Jumped yeah. at it. Um, so what's it like? Like, I'm a high school student. Right. I want to be in your position now. What, what steps should I take? You're doing it, man. You're doing it. The Brady Power Show or the Mid-After Morning Breakfast Biology Show. Biology, whatever. Yeah, that's a good touch. Something, yeah, I don't know. It, look, you got to get reps like anything, you know, whether it – as a matter of fact, I thought you might call me uh, Coach Mark. Whether it be baseball – Brady used to play a lot of baseball. Um, whether it be baseball or, uh, or, or, or any sport or – TV, you, what you want to do is you want to get reps and you want to do it. And, and obviously what you guys have here is just phenomenal. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's, it's better, it, the, the equipment, the, the opportunity that you have to do this stuff now in high school is ridiculous. It's better than the stuff I had in college. It's better than the stuff I had in the first couple of places I worked, actually. <laughs> so, you know, you're doing, what, you're doing what you need to do. You need to get reps. I tell college students all the time, you got to go to class, you got to get your grades, but you want to volunteer, work at the newspaper, work at the TV station, go to the radio station, do whatever you can do to get the reps. So being an NBC anchor, your job is to tell stories. What's some of the wackiest, you know, craziest stories that has happened, you know, to you or that you've told, that you've covered? What, what yeah, kind of well, I guess most of the, the lighter stuff that came out while I was doing sports. Of course. Uh, maybe some locker room stuff that I probably shouldn't share on a high probably, school I'd show. Probably not. Yeah, I'll maybe. tell you, there was one time, and I do, I love telling this story. Um, I, when I was at Turner, Turner Sports, TNT, TBS, I got to fill in for Ernie Johnson every now and then on the uh, NBA on TNT show, which is one of the biggest shows there is in sports television. It was, it was great to, to get the opportunity to do that. I did it a handful of times. First time I did it was Thanksgiving night. Um, EJ was doing a golf tournament in Hawaii or something. So uh, I got to fill in on Christmas night or on Thanksgiving night doing the show. And I went, I, Charles Barkley is on the show and a former NBA All-Star yeah. Hall of Famer, you yeah. know. A huge, huge guy, physically and literally and figuratively, uh, but great guy. And you now I, I knew him. I had met him a couple of times in passing. And you know we weren't friends or anything. But I figured I should go say hi to him again before the show. And I went and just reintroduced myself. And you know looking forward to working with you. He says, "You married?" I said, "Yeah, I'm married." What's your wife's name? Nikki. You got kids? Yeah, we got kids. Nikki, huh? I said, "Yeah." He said, grabs a phone, pulls it over on the desk, and he says, "What's her number?" And he go, it just, I gave him the number. He calls her up. Now, she's at our house with her family for Thanksgiving dinner. And, I, and he's, like, he's like, yeah, is this Nikki? She's like, yeah, who's this? He's like, it's Charles Barkley. He's out of the like, blue. Right. And she's like, um, hi, Charles. You know, I mean, she knew I was going to be there, so it wasn't completely out of the blue. But still, that he called. He talked to her for like 10 minutes and was hysterical. He's like, Mark, a house husband, isn't he? You got him wrapped around your finger, which... <laughs> Of course he was right, but um, but yeah, he he great guy and he's the real deal. What you see on TV, he was always very nice guy, very nice to me and my family. And but that was pretty funny. And then of course she she hung up the phone and her family was like, "Who is that?" She's like, "That was Charles Barkley." I'm like, oh my gosh! I don't know how to respond to that? Yeah, that was Charles Barkley. I'm yeah, it was Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley. Yeah, he's a good guy. So, so moving on from the wacky kind of stories, I know being an anchor, you, you do have to tell some hard-hitting, very serious uh, stories. So, you know, you probably figure I'll, I'll ask you this, but um, the, the Dallas shooting yeah. uh, not, not too long ago, what, what, what was it like covering that? Yeah, that was, that was tough, you know, and that was the thing when I made the transition to news that I, I went from, you know, being kind of the uh, 
comic relief at times mm -hmm. or the lighter moment of the newscast or, or of, of people's day. It was what they could get a, from getting away from the negativity of the world. It's why people enjoy following sports. They mm -hmm. just do, you know, it's fun. But yeah, with, with news, it's more serious. And I had a hard time at first, um, you know, on a day in and day out basis. Just, uh, you know, there was one time I remember thinking to myself, gosh, can we go one day without having a kid die? Yeah. You know, having to report that on a daily basis, it could be tough. And the Dallas thing was rough. I was actually at Rangers Ballpark, um, at, at Globe Life Park, watching watching the Rangers play with my son and, and his, um, you know, Little League Baseball team. And I was on my way home. It's about 11 o'clock at night. And, and I got, and I, of course, got into the car, turned on the radio. I heard what was going on. And I got a call. I had taken the next day off. Okay. Because I, was, I knew I was going to be at the ballpark late, and they're like, we kind of need you to come in. So it's 11 o'clock at night. I get home. I go in early for the early, you know, I go in at like 2 a.m. So I got home. I took like a, an hour nap, and I went back in, and we were on air until noon the next day or something like that. It was, it was rough. But I will say this. In doing news, and, and as, as you decide, as people decide what they want to do, the thing about the difference between the news and the sports is, and it's the reason why I made the change, you know, at some point I was like, what am I doing just announcing sports scores for a living? You know, this, I feel like I'm doing something more more important, uh, news does provide a service for people. People need to um, uh, have knowledge and know what's going on in the world. And in situations like that, certainly, people want to be comforted. They want to know when it's over. They want to know when it's safe. And, and we provide that for them. And, and the more information you have, the more comfortable you feel about the negative situation. So, you know, that's, yeah, obviously, I would hope that we would never have to cover a story like that again. Um, but it is part of our job that, that makes, it, makes me feel like I'm doing something valuable. Yeah. So, so you said, you know, sports and news. Which, which did you like, like more? I know you're doing news now. Yeah, I, well, I like both. And, and I, there's parts of doing sports I miss. There's parts I don't miss. Um, and I always, even when I did sports, I liked breaking hard stories. I was fortunate. I, got, I broke uh, Dennis Franchoni when he went from Alabama, the head coach of Alabama, and he mm -hmm. went um, to Texas A&M. I actually broke that story, and we made a big deal out of that. That was a big deal, and it led all of the newscasts, and I enjoyed doing that. I do enjoy the light stuff, too, and I'm fortunate that, that the folks at NBC5 let me do, you know, when the Olympics were here, I got to do the Olympic Zone show, which was fun. That's great. And kind of right in my wheelhouse and stuff I had done before in my career. And we do, you know, the, the Sunday night football bus comes to town. We'll go out and we'll have some fun with that. And doing mornings is a little lighter, too. It's more like this. There's a little more conversation and it's, it's kind of fun. We got, usually we got a goofy weather guy. He's kind of like you. He's a little okay. goofy. He's funny. Yeah. Good looking, though, right? It, sure. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, he might be a little better looking than you. But, okay. but he's fun. He's a funny guy. We get, to have fun. <laughs> we get to have fun with it, which is one of the reasons why I like doing the mornings, too, because, yes, we do do the serious news, but we get to kind of relax a little bit, too. That's awesome. Yeah. Got to move on. To cut it short. We got to yeah. move on. Well, to the rest before of the we show. go, I do need to say, you know, Charles Barkley, Deborah Ferguson, who's a legend in in Dallas Fort Worth. I work by, with her every day, but this is it, man. I feel like I made it big time. Brady Powers and the Mid After Morning Biology Before Lunch They're getting Show. They're getting yeah, we well, appreciate you having me. I appreciate you so much. Too. Thank you so yeah. much. We'll be right back with guitarist Pine Martin after this short break. Ladies and gentlemen, here to perform is local artist Pine Martin.
great performance. Thank you so much for being on the show. If you want to check out more of Pine Martin's music, check out www.pinemartin.bandcamp.com. Uh, if you want lessons, check out Texas Amps and Axes. We'd like to thank NBC anchor Mark Fine once again, everybody, and Pine Martin, of course. We'll see you guys next time here at the Mid-Morning Show. <laughs>